Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the last talk of the day. So my name is Dedali Vandel. I'm a software engineer at NVIDIA. And today I will be sharing uh, my experience with writing automated tests uh, for NVIDIA's computing platform that is built on Kubernetes and Convert. I've been working with Convert for the past year and during that time I've gained some insights on how to write effective automated tests in this environment. Today with me is Qian, my colleague at NVIDIA, who in the second part of this talk will share insights into using Convert and to end tests uh, for ensuring Convert functionality. So during this talk, we will be uh, sharing some of the challenges we faced when writing automated tests for NVIDIA's computing platform, how we overcame these challenges, and the best practices for writing effective automated tests with Kubert. Uh, my hope is that you will be able to take away some valuable insights uh, that you can use to improve your own automated testing efforts. Oh. So a little bit overview of Kubert. Uh, of, uh, Kubert use case at NVIDIA. NVIDIA uses Kubert as the core part of, to build cloud native infrastructure and services on the on-prem data center to support our global multi-tenancy workloads like stream gaming. The stream games run on the Windows machines for the end user and backend services run on Linux virtual machines. All our infrastructure services run in Kubernetes, so they must be isolated in a multi-tenancy environment. We have different uh, complicated hardware devices which need to be supported by the infrastructure services, such as many different types of GPUs, PCIe devices, and uh, some more. Uh, these resources need to be assigned dynamically to the VMI, to the VMIs. At, at this point, uh, we don't have any demand to use uh, complex virtual machine lifecycle management and migration. Most of our workloads are created on an on-demand manner. The workload uh, runs in a high-intense dynamic manner, uh, VMs burst with creation and deletion every minute, and many exist less than two hours. Our platform handles creation rate of at least 600 VMs per minute, and normally the Kubernetes cluster runs over 600 bare metal nodes, and over 1,000 of VMIs are running every minute. So in this slide, I will talk a little bit about the types of integration tests we have developed and why they help us. Uh, we run all our integration tests in the already provisioned uh, zones, and we have several different categories that tests belong to. So first is verification of a platform's stack health. This test ensures that all the necessary stacks, such as Kubernetes nodes, daemon sets, pods, Convert objects like uh, virtual handlers and so on are up and running uh, at, that, at the moment of the test. These tests only get information and don't modify uh, or create objects in the cluster. This allows us to run these tests also on live production zones. For example, if there are some changes that we want to verify that, that, that the zone is still healthy and operates. Another category of tests is verification of platforms, basic sanity flows. And these tests initiate simple workflows that create VMIs with different resources, such as GPUs, and uh, eventually uh, tests delete all the resources that uh, they created. These tests have some footprint on the zone, but it is relatively small in terms of the time it takes and resources and the load. And the last category is feature-specific tests. And this uh, category includes many different test scenarios. The tests run longer, usually create many objects uh, in the zone and uh, have all kinds of configurations. Uh, to test some edge cases, uh, this test might consume all the, resource of, all the resources of a specific type on a node, for example, specific GPU. We found it useful uh, to run this test in several different scenarios. Um, and the main two uh, scenarios uh, for this use case are uh, writing tests as part of the CI uh, before uh, pushing the changes. 
And the second use case is running this test on a specific cluster to verify it, that it is functioning as expected. So here, the categorization of tests uh, comes in handy. We can safely run tests that have no or a very low uh, footprint on live production zone. Um, so now I will share a few things that we have learned along the way. And the first lesson learned is that developers tend to write more tests when it is easy. So um, how we did that, we built APIs and wrapper functions uh, for creating test uh, suites and writing functional tests. For example, uh, we have uh, all the covert object handling uh, wrapped in the very simple um, APIs. For example, VMI creation handling, action on nodes that we uh, we have uh, with very easy uh, access to uh, those functions, uh, actions on pods and some more. This way it is uh, easier to add new tests and we can focus on writing the logics for the test case and not uh, implementing the infrastructure around it. Um, we found many useful code for testing in Kubernetes and Kubert projects, but unfortunately we were uh, unable to vendor in Kubernetes because it is too large. Uh, and uh, so we ended up copying the parts that were relevant for us. For example, everything that is related to managing node objects, pod objects, config maps, namespaces, and uh, some more. Uh, Kubvert is a bit smaller, so we ended up vendoring in Kubvert for using some test-related functionality. So it's great to have all this uh, functionality that we could use, and uh, we would be uh, happy to be using more of it in a maybe more convenient way. A little bit about debugging. Um, after the test has been completed, uh, we have a cleanup process that deletes all the relevant namespaces and objects that uh, were created during uh, the test. This makes um, a bit challenging to know what was the problem during the test execution. Basically, uh, this is why we have to put an effort to have all the needed information and we try to root cause the problem during the test run and uh, to print everything we need to the, out to the logs. Uh, for example, we have simple tests, uh, just an example to, um, to uh, showcase what I am talking about. So we have a test that compares some uh, number of Kubernetes nodes that are able to accommodate your handler daemon set and the number of actual your handler daemon sets running in the zone. This comparison uh, allows us to understand that there are some nodes that don't run with weird handler while they are supposed to. While it is displayed only the numbers, we had to manually look for the nodes that don't uh, run the weird handlers. And after a small change in the test, uh, now uh, the test itself now looks for and prints out the problematic node names. So uh, this is first the manual steps in investigation. Uh, so uh, this is just a small example that uh, explains uh, why it is important to invest in um, adding some logic to not only uh, show that there is some problem, but also to find and maybe root cause even further the problem itself. Uh, we had some discussions about code organization of the uh, integration test repo. Um, and um, there are two options to put everything in the uh, single uh, separate integration test repo or to put integration tests uh, in the um, uh, code, uh, in the code, code projects uh, of the uh, production code. So we ended up using single test repo for the integration test. And uh, that's what is working for us in this case. We have better access to all tests code and you can easily search and see how other tests are implemented. Um, it also makes it easier to constantly improve and refactor code when all the code is in the same uh, repo. This approach also uh, was a good solution for tests that um, integration between several features that don't belong to a specific uh, 
report. And our tests for new components are seamlessly added to be executed by all the flows. You don't have to configure um, your pipeline for a new project, uh, for new uh, tests uh, that belong to a new project, for example. And it is also easier to maintain dependencies when it comes to testing repo. It doesn't affect the production code and it is done all at one place. So that's uh, why this uh, approach worked for us. So to recap this part, and before I uh, hand the microphone to Qian, uh, I, I thought it would be useful to uh, look at this uh, um, with these uh, building blocks. Uh, so we have several building blocks that help us writing the integration tests and the, what we want to achieve is to make it very easy to add new test cases and new test suites. And we, this way we are all able to focus on integration uh, tests uh, and the, their logic and the keep code organized. So basically we have uh, our building blocks uh, that is uh, the infrastructure level of the Kubernetes, the Kubernetes, and the Ginkgo and Gomega. And uh, we have the uh, utilities of the uh, functions that we have um, created for making everything easier, like VMI handling and the Kubernetes node functionality and the, uh, pod functions and um, all the things that you see here um, in this diagram. And on top of that, we were able uh, to build uh, our test cases, uh, which are easier to uh, maintain and to add uh, some new ones. And now I will pass uh, the microphone to Qian, who will talk about the lesson learned running convert and to end test. Sure, yeah, thanks, Lani. Please go to your next slide, so maybe I, you can share the screen so I can keep talking. Yeah. Uh, first, some uh, background information. So basically, as Natalie mentioned, so Kubert is our uh, NVIDIA's Cloud Platform's core components. We use it to provision a VM uh, resources for cloud gaming service. Uh, one issue we are having is uh, we are a uh, lack of functional tests uh, for uh, Kubert in NVIDIA clusters. Uh, we have uh, many uh, unit tests, but we, uh, we don't have uh, enough uh, cluster level Kubert tests running in NVIDIA Cloud Platform. So basically, uh, using our own framework, we can uh, develop uh, our own tests uh, about Kubert, but uh, still, that's not enough. Usually, the number of tests written by us currently is around uh, 100, which is uh, still uh, not enough uh, compared with the uh, complexity of the Kubert project. So without enough functional tests, it would be hard to discover and triage um, some very uh, deep level uh, Kubert uh, related uh, issues. Next slide, please. Uh, Natalie, okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what is a uh, Kubert uh, functional test? Uh, it is basically the engineering test running uh, Kuber Kubernetes uh, clusters. So the tests are written in Golan's uh, Ginkgo test framework and the test will run in Kubert test default namespace. So basically it is uh, isolated from the rest of uh, the cluster. And the cast test code is, run, uh, is inside the Kubert test directory, which is similar to what Kubernetes uh, do. Uh, running a functional test on a, a physical zone is not that hard. So basically, we use kubeconfig flags to point the uh, test to the clusters. Like if you have defined uh, the kubeconfig in uh, kube.config file and have some uh, default con test config, then you can uh, run in Kubert functional uh, test uh, in uh, any uh, clusters. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, we need to understand why Kubert test is needed by uh, a media cluster. 
So basically, uh, Emilia Cloud, Cloud Platform contains many open source components. Many of those already contain uh, functional tests. Big open source project usually contains a huge number of tests. For example, Kubernetes contains 1,000 plus tests. So basically, uh, these upstream tests are written by components, developers, and they are usually uh, reliable. It covers uh, many aspects uh, of the project, and some of them are usually uh, very uh, deep level. So it can uh, help us determine the quality and detect potential bugs in our uh, customized uh, open source components. Next slide, please. Uh, what types of tests are included? So Kubernetes contains many types of tests. The most important one is related to the VM behavior. Like uh, for the VM lifecycle test, it's about uh, uh, when a VM is, is created, whether it can go through the proper uh, phases like scheduling to schedule to running and finally uh, succeeded or failed. Uh, this is very uh, basic and usually it can serve as a sanity test uh, uh, for Kubernetes behavior. And uh, the second uh, part of tests is a configuration test. It's like when we uh, configure VMI in different ways, whether VMI can, can behave correctly. And also we have uh, the tests for different uh, components like hook side cars, uh, and uh, even the uh, VM console and VNC uh, access. Uh, also, there are tests about uh, Kubernetes components like Kubernetes control plane, such as uh, vert handler and uh, vert, uh, vert controller and, and, and uh, vert APIs. And also there are uh, monitoring related uh, tests that can detect whether the Kubernetes has exposed the correct uh, matrix that can be uh, used by uh, other tasks. Uh, there are also uh, network and storage uh, related tests that can test uh, the VMs uh, under uh, VMs uh, network and storage uh, behavior. And also there are uh, Kubernetes uh, features related tasks uh, that uh, test uh, different features like live migrations, things like uh, hot plug, and etc. Next slide, please. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, customization. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, Kubernetes test is not a raw, uh, out of out of the box uh, in uh, in media cluster. Customization uh, is needed. Uh, so basically, uh, we need to, uh, in order to uh, do the customization, we create a Emilia Golan package and store it uh, in the test directory. So in this case, uh, it would be easier for, easy for us to, uh, to customize, uh, to, to store all the customization logic of the Kubernetes test uh, and use them. Uh, there are several uh, customization uh, we did in order to make the Kubernetes functional test uh, compatible with Emilia cluster. The first is the uh, zone access. Uh, Emilia uh, zone use uh, Azure for authentications. Uh, when we first tried to uh, run Kubernetes functional tests on Emilia cluster, we found that uh, Azure zone support is not uh, enabled on uh, the Kubernetes test. So basically, uh, we need to add uh, Azure zone access, access uh, logic for the test code. Uh, the second type of, uh, of customization is sometimes we need to uh, skip a test that is disruptive uh, in uh, NVIDIA cluster. Uh, for, exa for example, for this uh, test with test ID 4716, uh, it says when word handler is deleted, it should label the node with Kubernetes schedulable equals false. So usually uh, we should not uh, delete uh, the word handler in a live production environment. Because uh, in a live production environment, uh, there are usually uh, gaming traffic. The users are using it. If we delete our handler, users may feel uh, disruptions and uh, even uh, session and data loss. 
So for this type of test, it's very uh, it's not suitable to run uh, in uh, live zones. So uh, we define a skip disruptive function to skip this type of test while running in the immediate cluster. Uh, also, we need to uh, skip uh, not yet enabled and imported uh, Kubernetes features in immediate cluster as well. Uh, for example, a live migration feature is not yet supported in immediate cluster. So uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, test contains a, a, a huge number of uh, live migration related uh, tests. So this type of test uh, all needs to be uh, skipped. So basically, we add another uh, skip live migration function to begin it, to the end of the beginning of the live migration test code to, to skip them. Uh, next slide, please. And another very important uh, customization is uh, we should uh, schedule VM to proper host only. So uh, immediate cluster is heterogeneous. It contains a mixed type of hosts. So like we have a control plane host, we have a storage host, we have a network host, and we have a, a gaming hosts. So only certain host type, uh, uh, for example, it is the game host, is allowed to run the virtual machine on. Other hosts like control plane hosts, they have uh, extra context applied, which will uh, prevent uh, the, the test container this VM running successfully. So uh, we shouldn't run the test VM on those type of hosts. So uh, Kubernetes uh, test uh, uh, doesn't uh, distinguish uh, hosts yet. So in order to uh, resolve this, uh, we uh, add a, a select VMI to GS node function uh, to uh, uh, and, and use it to uh, restrict uh, VM test VM creation on the game host uh, in an engine cluster. The implementation implementation is uh, not hard, so it's basically like create a, a map that contains uh, the host type information and set it as the node selector of the VMI. And uh, for some cases, uh, we need to uh, uh, patch uh, uh, the VMI definition uh, when necessary. Uh, one example is uh, we need to uh, make uh, the test VMI uh, fit on uh, different uh, game node types. Uh, so basically, uh, in our cluster, we can we have different types of game node types. Like we have V2 hardware and V1 hardware. So during uh, uh, during the development, we found that uh, the Alpine container disk test VM image kernel is not compatible with the V2 game nodes uh, latest uh, uh, AMD uh, micro uh, architecture. This is because the AMD uh, micro architecture has a uh, IMV PCID uh, CPU features that is not compatible with the uh, test VM uh, kernel. So in order to resolve this, uh, we uh, patch the VMI definition, test VMI definition, uh, to add a, a disable policy for the uh, IMV PCID CPU features. And after we uh, apply this uh, patch, uh, patches the the VMI can run uh, successfully on uh, both uh, V2 and V1 uh, game nodes. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, after the customization is completed, uh, then we are able to uh, run Kubernetes test on uh, in our cluster and uh, check uh, how. Uh, the Kubernetes components uh, behaves and the status uh, in the immediate clusters. Uh, we use our uh, own test framework uh, to have uh, uh, like a weekly pipeline, pipeline run of Kubernetes tests on Saturday, and also can do the on-demand pipeline run for certain Kubernetes tests. Use. Like if we only change the behavior of VMI lifecycle, we can specify uh, parameters of Kubernetes test use to, to, 
specified to run a VMI lifecycle test only. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, some future steps. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, currently uh, we have not uh, uh, migrated all the Kubernetes tests to Nvidia cluster, cluster yet. Yeah, we can enable more Kubernetes test suits in Nvidia cluster in futures. Also, some uh, Kubernetes test functionality like console network storage utility function is very useful, and maybe we can uh, introduce it into Nvidia platform's own test framework. So Natalie, do you want to talk more about other takeaways? Yeah, sure. So uh, for those steps regarding the first part, uh, basically uh, to leverage more Kubernetes is convert existing test packages and continue improving and enhancing testing code packages that can be used uh, as building blocks uh, to make us uh, add more tests easily. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I see in the chat that Alexander asked, Chian, I think it was for your part. Does that mean that you are running the latest test again your cluster. We release a separate test binary by release that only contains tests relevant to that release. There should be no need to skip features from newer versions if you use the test associated with the release. I just saw it in the query session, yeah. Yeah, so basically there are two types of config. One is the cube config uh, that is like point the test to a, a, a specific cluster. And the, uh, the test config is another part. So basically when writing our test, we use uh, the default test config. No need to skip features for new version. Yeah, so basically, uh, there's a test binary. Okay. Yeah, so if there's a test binary, then maybe you can uh, use it in future. Like if it is a released version, then uh, it'll be good for us to run that test binary directly. Yeah. Is the test binary like uh, it is being built and released like other com Kubernetes components, like Kubernetes? Uh, uh, like a uh, virtual operator and virtual handler. Yeah. If that is the case, it will be easy for us to, to use. Yeah, we can definitely try that. Try the binary directly. Uh, you know, uh, so it will be a, if there's a binary, then it will be more convenient for us to use. So currently, I think we use the Ginkgo command uh, to to run the tests. Yeah, and uh, with the release, it will be uh, easier for us to to have a different version of tests. Right? So currently, I think we are switching the branch to different Kubernetes branches and uh, the run that version of tests. Yeah, if we have a release binary that would be very convenient. Yeah. All right. Um, and Li Jian, thank you both for sharing your presentation with us. Thank you. It was good presenting. Thank you.